people of All Saints, another recording from this church that was designed by an architect, George Street, and the first priest was William Gresley. This particular week, we are commemorating, celebrating the life of John Keeble, who was one of the great men of the Oxford movement, which was behind buildings such as this offering worship to the glory of God, education of the young, the school that were formerly in this ground, in these grounds, uh, curate's houses for pastoral care and the arms houses that we still run to the present day. As I say, the first priest was called William Gresley, who had grown to love the sacramental Catholic ritual of the Oxford movement, which encouraged the understanding of word and sacrament. You can see in this building uh, of All Saints the prominence of the pulpit, the font and the altar. And if you want to see it in all its glory, please go to our website and see and follow the virtual tour, which is a wonderful thing to be able to do. The buildings pointed to the worship to the glory of God, as I've said, the education of young people, the pastoral care of those in need. And one of the great Tractarians who would have influenced Street, the architect, and Gresley, the priest, was John Keeble, who we commemorate this week. Keeble was educated by his father to a standard that enabled him to gain a double first in classics and mathematics. Only Robert Peel had achieved this before. He was a brilliant academic, a poet, following the footsteps of George Herbert in the 17th century. In an essay that I wrote at college, I entitled it, Blessed are the pure in heart, saying that it was Keeble's holiness that was his contribution to the Oxford movement. But the assessor wisely and correctly said that the movement needed an ideal of the parish priest. With that in mind, I choose today to look at Keeble's simple parish life as a priest for 30 years in Hursley, Hampshire, rather than his discussions with Pusey, Freud and Newman at Oriel in Oxford. It was claimed that Keeble was lazy. He himself felt that he was a poor correspondent, failing to write to a dear friend who was dying. In reality, though, he looked after two churches, a chapel in a school. He reconstructed both churches and built the school chapel. He taught in the school for one hour every day. He visited the sick. He ran six month confirmation classes. He kept an exhausting correspondence with people. He welcomed penitents and found time for great writings such as the Christian year. He could get depressed feeling the church was in decay. One of his great poems was the saviour in his people crowned. It compares the light of a waterfall which unites drips of water in a single current with the individual yet corporate brilliance of the saints. It is their common baptism that sustains them in their shared identity. Man, by giving time to God, he will find a brother and a friend, one who has loved him and taught him how, how to love. One who through the sacraments gives grief solace, strengthens doubts, soothes remorse and sheds light in the dark places of this world. This is describing word coming alive in action sacramental living. As we think about small Christian communities, which is a theme that I am sharing with the congregation over the coming weeks. Last week we looked at communion model for shared small Christian communities. This week in the newsletter we will be thinking about what it is to understand the Kingdom of God. And we might think about this idea of the Kingdom of God in a simple way when we think about Keeble, the idea that the love of the Trinity flows out into the church and to all of creation, guided and inspired by the incarnate Christ, 
the Holy Spirit dwelling within each one of us. The kingdom of God has, of course, many dimensions, but to say that it is of the mind, heart and value of Jesus is probably a good starting point. Keeble tried to live this way, a Christ-like life. Indeed, he followed the idea of blessed are the pure in heart. May we too at this time be inspired to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, and with all our soul, and love our neighbours as ourselves. May we end up causing a few ripples of goodness to flow out into the world. And may we pray that the values of the kingdom may be prayed for and brought into this world now. We look forward too for the time when we shall see all the glory of the kingdom in the place we call heaven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, 
that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect and the readings for John Keeble, priest, tractarian and poet. Father of the eternal word, in whose encompassing love all things in peace and order move, grant that as your servant John Keeble adored you in all creation, so we may have a humble heart of love for the mysteries of your church and know your love to be new every morning in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We who are strong ought to put up with the failings of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Each of us must please our neighbour for the good purpose of building up the neighbour. For Christ did not please himself, but, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us for the coming of his kingdom. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. Let us pray. God, shepherd of your people, whose servant John Keeble revealed the loving service of Christ in his ministry as a pastor of your people. By this Eucharist in which we share, awaken within us the love of Christ and keep us faithful to our Christian calling through him who laid down his life for us, but is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Recalling our baptismal promises, we go forth to channel God's love. We go into the world to walk in God's light to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory.